Hello everyone, welcome to day 21st of Master Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanjay Rodeja, I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present day 694 of daily lead code problem. The question that we have in today is coin change. Here in this question we are given various denominations of coins. Along with this we are also told an amount that represents the total amount of money that we have. What we need to do? We need to identify the minimum number of coins that are needed to make up that amount. If it is not possible, then we have to return minus one in those cases. So let's walk through an example and uh, get a good hold of the concept. Let's assume we have coins of denominations one, two and five. And in order to achieve a total amount of 11, one way is to use 11 coins of denomination one. Other way is to use two coins of denomination five and one coin of denomination one that also makes up till 11 there are plenty of more permutations that are that may be possible and uh, the minimum one will come out to be three which one this one five plus five plus one gives you 11 and here you are utilizing only three coins so without further ado let's quickly walk through the presentation and i'll be walking you through various test cases as well as the algorithm to go about it by the ppt so let's quickly hop on to it lead code three double two coin change it's a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. The concept that we will use to solve this question would be dynamic programming. I know dynamic programming is the toughest of all the concepts of DSA and for this since placement season is around the corner I have created a dynamic programming revision sheet. It includes approximately 50 questions and use this sheet before your interviews to revise various concepts of dynamic programming. I have attached its link in the description below, so do check that out. Without further ado, let's get back to the problem. Also, in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general with respect to placements, jobs, Adobe, anything, please feel free to ping me on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded. The link to is stated below. Let's assume we have denominations of coins 1, 2 and 5. And let's start with the base case where the total amount right now that we have is zero and the total coins needed for achieving sum of zero is again zero. So this represents the total amount and this represents whatever in this in the bracket represents the total coins needed for achieving that amount. And let's get started. Let's assume in the first iteration I am using denomination one. So the total amount gets updated to one and the total co coin count also gets updated to one. Similarly, in the second go, I'm using a coin of denomination two. So the total amount gets updated to two and the total coin count gets updated to one. And let's use five this time. And the total amount gets updated to five and the total coin count gets updated to one. And let's spread the tree further. So let's start from this. Now let's create three more branches. And in the first go, we will use denomination one. Second go we'll use 2 and third go we'll use 5. So what do we get? We get the total sum of 2 and the total coins needed happens to be 2. Let's proceed ahead. Next we will get the total sum as 3, total coins needed is 2. Next we will get 6, the total coins needed is 2. Great. So far so good. Let's proceed ahead and let's create branches for this portion. So one will be using one other one will be using 2 and third one will be using 5. So 1 plus 2 gives you 3. So the total amount gets updated to 2 and the number of coins used happens to be 2. Let's proceed ahead. 2 plus 2 gives you 4. The total coins used is 2. 2 plus 5 gives you 7. The total coins used gets updated to 2. And let's create more branches for this particular branch which is 5. And here again we will create 3 more sub branches. So one for one, other one for two and the third one for five. So one plus five gives you six. The total coin count is two. Two plus five gives you seven. The total coin count is two. And the next one is five plus five, which is 10. The total coin count is two. And now what you can do, you can further create more branches. So for each uh, node, you will create three more branches and continue doing the processing. What you will see, you will see that 
at 10 when you are creating more branches so one would be for one other one would be for two and the third one would be for five so 10 plus one gives you 11 and the total coin count will be updated to three which all of you will agree with me in the question the total amount that was given to us was 11 therefore what we are going to do we will look out for all those instances where the total amount of 11 is getting generated and we will be selecting that one which has the minimum number of coin associated present in the brackets so here in this case it would turn out to be 3 and 3 becomes the answer so this is a brute force way of solving this question where from each branch you are creating 3 more branches and further increasing the breadth of the tree where can dynamic programming come into picture let's shoot for it but this forms the ground foundation for dynamic programming if you have understood this then you will understand that as well how let's move to it here i have created a dp array of size equal to amount plus one why amount plus one because array starts from an index zero therefore here in this case the amount was 11 i have created a dp array of size 12 and when i say what does dp at the ith index signify it represents the minimum number of coins needed to achieve the total amount of i for example we, when i say dp of i dp of i as dp of 5 what does it represent the minimum number of coins needed to achieve total of 5 amount as 5 so the this represents the minimum coins needed let me just write minimum coins needed and let's try and understand this equation now so what does it represent? It says that dp for this particular amount is equal to max.minimum and the first part is dp of amount minus 1 plus 1. So what? how, how can I an analyze this equation? It means that I since I have three denominations 1, 2 and 5. So I go to the amount minus 1 position which here in this case is 4 and I add I extract that value I add 1 to it so whatever value is stored over here I plus 1 to it and this would be one possibility for answer so the minimum number of coins needed for amount minus 1 plus 1 is one possibility of answer what is the other possibility of answer the other possibility of answer would be since I have denomination 2 with me I go two steps back I reach dp of 3 and I check its value I add 1 to it so this will give me the second possibility of answer in order to reach the total sum of 5. Let's proceed ahead and the third part is amount minus 5 plus 1. Why minus 5? Because the other denomination is of 5. So I go back to the 0th index, I check its value and I add 1 to it because I can use the coin with 5 denomination in order to reach the total sum of 5 from that position. So out of these three possibilities, whatever gives me the minimum one, that becomes my final value for this particular amount, which is dp of amount. Let's start the iteration. So let's iterate from i equals to 1 and we'll go up till i equals to 11. So what is the first possibility of answer? For, we'll go back to amount minus 1. 1 minus 1 gives you 0. So we'll go to this position and add 1 to it so 0 plus 1 gives you 1 so one possibility of answer is 1 let's look out for this equation now amount minus 2 so 1 minus 2 gives you minus 1 it is negative so let's skip it similarly amount minus 5 1 minus 5 gives you minus 4 so let's skip it so the answer here becomes 1 so let's update it to 1 let's proceed ahead next we have 2 i equals to 2 so let's go one step backwards so what do we get we get one from it so one plus one gives you two so one possibility of answer is two let's shoot for the second possibility of answer let's go two steps back so it gets go two steps back we get zero zero plus one gives you one so out of one and two which one is the minimum one uh, one is the minimum one so this gets updated to one and i have skipped this because this will go in negative for i equals to two so let's proceed ahead next we see is 3 so let's go a step back uh, what do we see we see 1 so 1 plus 1 gives you 2 so one possibility of answer is 2 
let's go two steps back now so what do we have we have one one plus one gives you again two so the other possibility is two and for the third possibility three minus five gives you minus two so it's negative uh, we will not consider it out of two comma two which one is a minimum one two is a minimum one so this gets updated to two let's proceed ahead next we have four i equals to four so let's go one step back uh, what do we see we see two two plus one gives you three so one possibility of answer is three let's shoot for the other possibility let's go two steps back we have one so one plus one gives you two so the other possibility is two and uh, let's shoot for the third one amount minus five four minus five gives you minus one which is negative so we'll skip it out of three and two which one is the lower one two is the lower one so the answer here gets updated to two which is in sync with our expectation because you will be using two coins of denomination two in order to reach a total sum of five four let's proceed ahead and let me just change the color of pen for better understanding and now we have i equals to 5 and let's go one step back at, at 4 we have 2 2 plus 1 gives you 3 so one possibility is 3 let's go two steps back we have 2 2 plus 2 1 again gives you 3 so the possibility is 3 and let's go uh, 5 steps back now because 5 minus 5 is 0 so let's go 5 steps back and at 0 the value is 0 so 0 plus 1 gives you 1 and out of 3 3 1 which one is the least 1 is the least so this gets updated to 1 which is in sync with our expectation because for achieving a total sum of 5 you only need 1 coin of denomination 5 let's proceed ahead next we have i equals to 6 so let's go one step back we see 1 so 1 plus 1 gives you 2 so one possibility of answer is 2 let's go two steps back at 4 what do we see we see 2 so 2 plus 1 gives you 3 so the possibility is this one and let's shoot for the third possibility let's go five steps back at one we have the value as one so one plus one gives you two so the third possibility is again two so out of two three and two which one is the least one two is the least one the answer becomes two which is in sync with our expectation because either you will be using one or five or five comma one therefore here you can see there were two possibilities with total coin count as two one represent, representing 1 comma 5 and another representing 5 comma 1. Let's proceed ahead. Let me just change the color of pen for better understanding. And now we have i equals to 7. So let's go one step back. Here we have value as 2. So 2 plus 1 gives you 3. Let's proceed ahead. Let's go two steps back. We have at 5 value as 1. So 1 plus 1 gives you 2. So this becomes 2. And let's go 5 steps back at 2 the value is 1 so 1 plus 1 again gives you 2 so the least out of these 3 is 2 so the answer becomes 2 and which is in sync with that expectation either you are using 2 comma 5 or 5 comma 2 as coins for achieving total sum of 7 let's proceed ahead next we have i equals to 8 let's go one step back so 2 plus 1 gives you 3 let's go two steps back at 6 we have the value as 2 so 2 plus 2 2 plus 1 again gives you 3 Let's go 5 steps back. At 3, the value is 2. So 2 plus 1 again gives you 3. So out of all these 3 possibilities, the least one is 3. So the answer here becomes 3. Let's proceed ahead. We have i equals to 9. And let's go 1 step back. So uh, 3 plus 1 gives you 4. One possibility. Let's go 2 steps back. Seven plus uh, At 7, the value is 2. So 2 plus 1 gives you 3. Other possibility is this. And let's go 5 steps back and here the value is 2 so 2 plus 1 gives you 3 so the answer uh, here becomes 3 because 3 is the least one out of 4 3 and 3 so this gets updated to 3 let's proceed ahead and uh, here we have i equals to a 10 and let's go one step back so one possibility is 3 plus 1 which is 4 let's go two steps back 3 plus 1 again gives you 4 and let's go five steps back so 5 plus at 5 the value is 1 so 1 plus 1 gives you 2 so out of 4 2 2 the least one is 2 so the answer becomes 2 which is in sync with our expectation because at 10 you are using 2 coins of denomination 5 let's shoot for the last case and at i equals to 11 let's go one step back the first possibility is 2 plus 1 which gives you 3 the other possibility is you go 2 steps back 3 plus 1 gives you 4 and the last one is you give, go 5 steps back which is i equals to 6 at 6 the value is 4, so 2 plus 1 again gives you 3, so out of 4, 3, 3, which one is the least one? 3 is the least one and the answer becomes 3. 
with this i have iterated over the entire matrix finally whatever stays in the last becomes your answer and here in this case which it's 3 which is in sync with our expectation from the previous analysis that we did now it's time to shoot for the coding section here i've created a dpra of size equal to amount plus 1 I have filled in the DPRA with integer dot max values, and as a default case, I have updated my DPRA at the zeroth index to zero. What do I do? I start an iteration for the amount, starting from i equals to one, going up till the amount value, and with each iteration, I am incrementing the i pointer. Here, I have created an inner loop. So, uh, whatever set of coins do I that I have, I check if my i minus that coin value. So, EL actually represents the coin denomination. So, let's update it. like this i minus coin is equal to greater than 0 if that is the case and dp of i minus coin is not equal to integer dot max value in that case what should i do i should consider dp or dp of i equals to dp of minimum of max dot minimum of dp of i comma dp of i minus coin plus 1 and once we are out of this loop what do i check i check if my dp at the last index happens to be equal to max dot minimum then that means it's not possible to achieve that total target using the denominations that we have and we need to return minus 1 in those cases otherwise we return a uh, dp at that particular amount the time complexity of this approach is equal to order of amount into the denomination the total number of points that we have and the space complexity is equal to the to the order of amount that we that we are looking for so let's shoot for it accepted 50 times faster which is pretty good and with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more update from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye